feel like not doing the fan is just disrespectful at this point. I'm not saying it's disrespectful that you're <laughs> not doing it, David. I'm just saying it feels wrong for me if I don't do it. I don't do the fan on this channel. I know, but I it feels wrong if I don't do it, period. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's over. Oh. And that's it. Thanks for joining the podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, if that's only, it. If only this episode were that easy. But <laughs> hello, hello, and hi there. Welcome to the Cup TV, the currently unnamed podcast, where we put the real and the tea in reality. And you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy. Say something gay. Gay. And today I am drinking unnamed uh, fruit punch flavored energy drink in my not sponsored tumbler. I'm like trying At least to avoid it's not strawberry logo. lime this time. Hey, don't you dare say anything about my strawberry lime. <laughs> well, I'm David Healy, and uh, I am the resident Survivor super fan. And I'm still coming down from my high because I met the one and only Sari Fields over the weekend, and it was incredible. Yes. Um, she was so sweet. She knew who I was. Um, but. Oh. We are talking about Australian Survivor, not U.S. Survivor. Um, but I am drinking some water. Well, you know what? It could also be very applicable to a discussion of Australian Survivor, David. A the fact mug. that we interviewed. No. Oh. Well, oh. We'll, get <laughs> we'll get to Cut Mug. You know what? We'll go to Cut Mug right now. Okay. Uh, because the cut people of Australia... Is. Because the people of Australia currently, unfortunately, cannot get cut marks. Mm. Damn you, international but, shipping. Woo. But you could get your merch if you would like at lanagecreations.etsy.com. Link is down in the description below. And we do ship domestically within North America currently, and we are working on our international shipping. So currently there are some excuses. So, but not for long. Not, but. to Australian Survivor. Circling back. To Australian Survivor and other survivors, you could also go check out the interview that we did a couple weeks ago with icon, legend, diva, Australian Survivor player, and two-time winner, Sandra Diaz Twine. And that'll be another like Survivor that I've met and that knows me. And we yes. did talk about N Nina briefly in the podcast. Ah, so. Icon, I love Nina. Awesome. And my name is Jack. I am the resident game designer of the panel. And oh, it's over. It's it over. really is over. It's like, over. I think we have easily one of the best seasons of Survivor, period. Agreed. Definitely agreed. And I. I'm so excited to talk about this end game. Me too. And what an introduction for you, Jack, because this is your first right. Yes, it's like great. We're starting so high. high. <laughs> like every other season, just there are a lot of other fantastic Australian Survivor seasons, and there are some duds. There are last season. Um, uh, you know, how dare you? I heard. <laughs> no, that's that's a uh, that's actually a pretty hot take that Logan had there. Uh, I know most is. people love last season, including myself. There's a lot of hot takes when it comes to me and David specifically. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Australian Survivor, as I've come to find out, um, we have pretty much opposite tastes in seasons, which I find very right. entertaining. There is something to enjoy, I would say, about every season of Australian Survivor. And I do feel like at some point, I would like to go back and start rewatching it from the beginning and talk about it here because I think that would be very fun. With what time is what I'm wondering because we don't have any, but um, yeah, because we we don't have time for what we're currently covering. But you know, so we were not able to get our stuff together to talk about last week's episode, and by that I mean my computer decided it wasn't going to work, um, and everyone's life was lifing at that moment but yeah. we are here now we are going to briefly talk about week seven um 
frankly, I didn't have a whole lot to say about that week in general. So I'm thankful for that. We are going to talk about the last three episodes of Australian Survivor. We're going to dive into the finale, final immunity, final tribal council. That left me a little underwhelmed, I'm going to be honest. But um, we're going to talk about all of that stuff. Before we do, though, make sure to subscribe if you've not already, because we are here almost all the time giving you Almost All Things Reality TV. We've got two other channels as well with Almost All Things Drag and Almost All Things Eurovision Song Contest. So you can go check those out as well. More fabulous things to come. Uh, and if you want to become a member of our channel and join the Tea Room for exclusive access and some early access content as well, make sure to go hit the join button over on our main channel or head over to Patreon. Same content, different platform. Those links are down in the description below. So, with all that being said, let's briefly touch on episodes 19, 20, and 21. Yeah. Because there's three I mean, main there's three main storylines that I want to talk about from each episode. How wine drunk was Alex at Tribal Council in episode 19? Why was Kirby's paranoia so bad in episode 20? And what happened in episode 21, just in general? <laughs> like, what happened with this vote? It's, I don't know. it's certainly a weird one. I can see scenarios yeah. where it makes more sense. But, I mean, a lot. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time this season where a move makes absolutely no fucking sense. But still happens anyways. Well, and that's kind of, you know, the one pitfall of uh, Australian Survivor editing is, like, sometimes with how much content they have in the 47 days that they have to film... There are some times where, like, editing is a little sparse, and you're kind of just like, how did we get here? Yeah. I don't I don't know how we got here, but... All right. But we're here. But we're here. So, um, episode 19, we get this reward challenge. It's the last reward of the season, as we've come to find out. Um, it's the Leaky Bucket reward... And this was a pretty, like, this was kind of dumb, in my personal opinion. Uh, there was no competition. No, there was no competition. And even then, midway through the challenge, Alex is just like, so who do I take on the reward with me? And he strategizes with Mark about this and is like, "Right, should I take you? Like, what should I do? And Mark is like, yeah, so um, the one thing you basically shouldn't do is take all of the girls. Like, that doesn't make sense for your game. Like, it just isn't smart. He then takes all of the girls. Yeah. I was wondering if he misunderstood what he said. Like, I maybe he thought he said, that. take take them. Yeah. Um, sorry, my cat ran outside, so I had to go get her. <laughs> Not Lily. She's fine. She's fine. I found she, her in the backyard. It, is she also upset that the season is over? She's very upset. Understood. Um, but yeah, so Alex wins the reward. He takes Caroline, Kirby, and Rihanna with him to uh, their beautiful uh, red wine spa. And my my one of my favorite moments of the season is just Alex in the confessional with his glass of red wine. And I'm like, oh no, this is not going to end well for you, baby. This is not... <laughs> oh no. It's very Mike White-coated. <laughs> It's so Mike White coated, <laughs> but almost in an opposite way. <laughs> like it feels very opposite to Mike White. But um we go to immunity and it's the stand on the pegs for as long as you can challenge. And guess what? We'll see that again a few episodes later, but on a terrifying wheel. A terrifying wheel. Oh god. They went right um, to Saw Trap. Honestly, <laughs> Australian Survivor, the whole season kind of just is this like slow march to Saw Trap. Because their final <laughs> immunity challenges are kind of always like this. Mm -hmm. I think of um, Brains versus Brawn. When I think of Saw I, Trap, I that one is that one. actually with terrifying. the spikes. Yeah, with the spikes. The cage of spikes. Give me a second just to like 
<laughs> well, I will say that this challenge had one of the craziest recoveries I've ever seen in a challenge. When oh, yeah. Alex falls all the way backwards, he's perpendicular with the ocean. Like only a few inches separated his body Literally. in the ocean. And somehow, he was a goner. Yeah, somehow he managed to pull himself back up. <laughs> and then still lost. And still lost. But because put up a Rihanna good wins. He sure did. He sure, sure did. But yes, Rihanna wins immunity. Um, it's a pretty cut and dry episode after that. Because the women are not trying to work with Alex. And really the only person Alex has on his side is Mark. And that is very much so reflected in the vote. What I do want to also bring up is the um, this tribal where Alex starts to spiral and he's doing everything he can to save his game at the last minute. And it reminded me so much of our dear Kelly. And I was like, he has just become Kelly. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I loved yeah. seeing it. I just, uh, the audacity he had to look at Caroline and look at Ferris, two of the biggest players, honestly, in the history of Australian Survivor, and be like, yes. what have you all done since the swap? Like, you have to do something. You've done nothing. And I'm like, uh, excuse me? They've done a lot. They have a lot of moves that they can claim. Ferris Just was integral in Raymond pulling off the move that he did to take out Valeria. True, but that was kind of a behind-the-scenes hidden thing. Like, Ferris wasn't owning up to that, which is smart. But, um, yeah. yeah, I just, like, Alex, I think he had, at this point, successfully successfully voted out one, maybe two people. Um, every other vote he did failed <laughs> spectacularly. And so it takes a lot of nerve to call out the two two of the Titans, even though it's Rebels versus Titans, and be like, you all have done nothing. And it's like, actually, maybe they've done plenty, but you just weren't looped in, and that's why you keep voting wrong every week. Yeah, Alex has had a consistent hot streak of switching to the Titans, mostly when they're about to be in the minority. It's honestly kind of impressive. He does <laughs> yep. get it right couple times but like it's not nearly enough and and then he goes home and then he goes home because everyone's like go home it's okay you can leave now Bye. he did he did leave a big impact in the game though because yes. if there was not already a spotlight on kirby there's a huge one now and i think his words even though i think they were a little misaligned uh, they're still ringing in everybody's ears moving forward. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Let's briefly touch on episode 20. Yeah. Where uh, Kirby, because of Alex's words at Tribal Council, Kirby is paranoid. And Kirby is now in damage control mode. And she's going to every single person that she could possibly work with. And this is where we see the true reunion of Ferris and Kirby. Um, because Kirby decides that in order to work with Ferris, she needs to, for some reason, throw Rihanna under the bus. Yeah, this was an interesting conversation because Ferris is like, I don't think I need to come after you. Not yet. <laughs> and Kirby is like, yeah, I, I want to go. I see myself in the final two with you. And Ferris is like, wait, really? Really? And I'm like, Ferris, huh? even, if, even if she doesn't <laughs> see herself in the final two, that's the smart thing to say. It's not smart yeah. to say... I, I, I don't want to cut you. Not yet. <laughs> like, I, I was like, why are you saying you're being a little too honest, Ferris? But maybe right. maybe Kirby's somebody that appreciates that. Like, if she knows where you stand in the future, 
she knows if she can trust you or not now. So definitely. Yeah, so she's she's spiraling. She's trying to make a women's alliance. She's trying to, you know, she's uh, she's realizing things aren't solid with Caroline and Kitty. That's when she talks to Ferris in the middle of the night, offers up Brianna as a sacrifice. And uh, Yay. none of that really yeah. ends up mattering. Because we go to immunity and it's a uh, domino effect, which I love. Uh, this end game was a lot of classic survivor challenges. And I was like, oh, yay. It's domino effect, but this time with a really big weight instead of like a just yeah. shaky platform, which yeah. I mean, makes sense based on the next challenge that comes up. But right. Like. Once again, we went right back to Saw Trap with like, yeah, we have a giant pendulum now that like, if you uh -huh. go the wrong way, we'll just swing into you. Slow oh. march to Saw Trap. That's what I'm telling you, Jack. That's how every yeah. season is. Especially Brains versus Brawn. <laughs> now that I think about I, it again. I just looked at it and I was like, no, this is literally just from the new Saw movie. Like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was wild. Um... But yeah, so all of Kirby's paranoia, all of her frantic, uh, franticness, none of that matters. Because guess what? She wins immunity. She finally goes 100% and wins challenges immediately because of yeah. course she can. I mean, I wouldn't and, expect anything less. And her immediate response is, oh, shit. I think I've now sent my number one ally home. And this, yeah. this, winning this immunity, I be, I think was the nail in her coffin. Because it kept her safe for this, it kept her safe for this tribal. But after that, she had kind of no reinforcements. See, but I think she needed it at this tribal council. I, because I they absolutely were, think she needs, she needs yeah, it. They were already like, well, who's it going to be? Whoever loses between... Rihanna and Kirby is going home. It was a lose lose for Kirby, and it really only provided her another opportunity. She would have had to win out. Yeah. She absolutely would have had to win out to make Final Tribal. So, um, again, another pretty cut and dry situation. Everyone's, it's, it's, is it Kirby or is it Rihanna? Well, Kirby has immunity. Therefore, yeah it's rihanna <laughs> true but it really did come down to what are ferris and raymond gonna do because they, they they had the numbers as the rebels so if they had just stuck it out um things could have gone quite differently um and it's really hard to say like if it was a good move for everybody involved uh like raymond i'm like i, I don't know if you would have had a better shot at getting to the end i don't want to jump ahead but maybe so maybe maybe it was a mistake uh to if it's flip over. if it ends up being the two duos the thing is if it ends up being the two duos i think ferris has basically everyone has a much tougher time beating Rihanna in any sort of end game because she's yeah. already proven she can just win it she can win endurance immunities and she would have won the final immunity. If she had competed oh, in the final immunity, she would have won. She would have been up there for six hours. 100%. Like, straight up, I think it I think it was the right idea to be like, oh, we can't get rid of Kirby. Let's get rid of her number one and also the person who will probably destroy us all in final immunity and probably multiple challenges down the line. It, it makes just, complete sense. It it just kind of morphed the who's the challenge target from Rihanna to Kirby. Yep. Which I don't blame. And then we kind of just see that happen again, like a little later on. But we'll get there. We do. So episode 21 is where in this week, I'm like, how did we get here? <laughs> so this episode is 
kind of all over the place. Caroline is kind of realizing she is in an interesting position. Kirby's lost her number one ally. So she is going on an idol hunt. And of course, one of these two has to get the idol. Because that's just, you know, the way that things are going to go here. And Caroline ends up getting it. If it was U.S. Survivor, we'd see them looking for it, and then suddenly we'd see a different person randomly get it. We would see. We would have. We would have had um, Kirby and Caroline looking for it, and then all of a sudden, Eileen would have just popped back on the beach and find <laughs> found the idol. Yep. Like, but Caroline finds it, so it's a bit of, you know, a bit of lovely, lovely uh, power in her hands. Um. And she wants to send a significant threat to the jury. Yeah, it's funny because like this whole like second half of the season has just been me. Like every time somebody gets power, I'm very excited, but very scared. <laughs> I'm yes. like, okay, ooh, I can't wait to see what you're going to do with it. Ooh, don't do anything against my favorites, <laughs> please. Literally, <laughs> literally. Um, and then, yes, so the reason why they didn't use the wobbly platform in the last immunity challenge, Jack, is because they had to save the wobbly platform for this challenge. Um, where we're, uh, you have a trip obstacle, you're stacking blocks. It's like the last challenge, but, but trapezoidal vertical. and vertical. And guess what? Mm -hmm. When you have two similar challenges back to back, shocker, the same person wins <laughs> both challenges. What? Yeah, no, it it was it was pretty cut and dry that Kirby was probably going to win this as well. The only other person who was close at any point was Mark, who quite literally got stuck placing his final thing to the point where Kirby placed it was like two seconds away from placing it on. And then he moves and knocks the whole stack down. Like it was mm. going to be nobody else. I loved this challenge too, because I thought it was so ballsy of Kirby in the middle of the challenge to be like, can I knock one off? And I'd never seen that done in a survivor challenge before. And I was like, Oh, you can do that? Oh. So she like fully sense. knocks off. She intentionally knocks off one of her uh, things in order to get a better stack. And I'm like, hey, it seemed to work for her. So but good see, on you, girl. I wondered if they would let her still stack on top if something else fell, though, like on its own, or if she would have had to go back and restack that first. So, uh, that I don't know. Yeah, because I th I think it was just like a random like on the whim like answer from Jonathan. But I th yeah I think if they actually thought about like is this fair considering like all aspect of the rules, I yep. think they might have said no. <laughs> I also think they might have said no, and I think if we see this challenge or a similar challenge in future seasons. They might say it because I remember with like the cup stacking challenge that we see a lot on US Survivor and we've seen it on other iterations as well, but mostly US. From what I remember in that challenge, like I've never seen anyone in any of these stacking challenges deliberately knock one of their own off. I don't know, David, you're, you're, you're the one that would know probably more than we would. Um, I don't remember any examples of that happening. Yeah, I can't think of one, um, but I'm also not like, the challenges are the thing I care about the least true. in Survivor. True, so. true, 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 true. And challenges are one of my favorite parts of Survivor. Fair. So, um, so yes, Kirby wins immunity. And we go back to this, like, scramble situation. Mark is nervous. Uh, Mark talks to the OG Rebels. They want Kitty out. Um, because she's done very well in endurance challenges. The immunity she won was endurance, right? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, and she has no, she has no problem like telling people, oh yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to be really good at endurance, but that doesn't take skill. <laughs> uh, and she right. keeps like telling everybody that, but 
like especially but when most Kirby. of the end game challenges have been endurance mm-hmm. like that's just that's just testament to like the fact that i just don't know how much game knowledge kitty had going into the game um and i have more to say about kitty here in a second and it's not all negative thankfully because i haven't been you know the world's biggest fan is it of kitty kitty, kitty purr it might be actually uh no shout out to blue kim um <laughs> caroline is trying to blindside ferris she's telling ferris that she's targeting mark she tells mark to vote for ferris and none of that ends up working <laughs> because... she doesn't want to tell kitty at all <laughs> Right. She's like, I don't want to tell Kitty because Kitty has a big mouth. You're not going to tell your number one ally this plan. Who is she going to tell? Raymond? <laughs> like, genuinely, who is she going to tell? I honestly think it was uh, just the fact that she's been so closely working with Kitty. She probably wants to go to the final two with Kitty. She yeah. needs to have things that distinguish her game from Kitty. So I think that was all it really was. Yeah. And, um, well, she figures out a plan where she's like, yeah, no, I can just blindside Ferris and take this big move for myself. Well, um, uh, all, almost. So Caroline goes through with her, you know, big plan and her big plan and her big move is to play the idol that she found this episode on Mark. Which, you know, there was a vote on Mark from Kitty. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, you know, she did nullify one vote. Unfortunately for her, she probably should have used that on her number one ally because Kitty gets voted out. (laughs) Yay! <laughs> and Mark oh is like, God. yeah, I would have told you not to do that. <laughs> L- uh, yeah. Because uh, then, okay, so if she does play the idol on Kitty, who goes in the Revo? Ferris? I mean, hmm, that's a good question. Well, it could be a fire it, situation. I honestly think it would probably come down to fire because I feel like Kirby and Raymond would vote out Mark. Right. Fire. Oh, wait. No, the idol was playing. No, it would go to. No, but the It'd idol in this rock. situation would be on Kitty. Yeah. Yes, I'm remembering. Um, yeah, Kirby and Raymond would vote out Mark, and Caroline and Kitty would vote out Ferris. So it would go to Rocks. Yeah, it would just. It would go I don't to feel rocks. like it would end up going. To, I don't feel like it would end up going to Rocks. I feel like. Well, it would have to be unanimous at that point, huh? I yeah. I think that I think the women would switch on Mark. Um, I think so that too. that it, that's where my gut is. As well. I feel more confident in Caroline and Kitty switching on Mark than I do both Kirby and Raymond switching on. Ferris. True, and that's it has to be tied. Um, it has to be deadlock tied. So it would be the first first tie of one one vote with the others yeah. nullified. Then they would revote. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be unanimous on the first revote. But if it ties again, then it would be have to be unanimous. At least that's and how I, it works in I the United it, States. And I think it would be two two in the first revote. And then once everyone talked, I think Kirby could convince Caroline and Kitty to vote out Mark. Yeah. So you know, Kitty for the for the you know, a little bit she played under Caroline's wing of this game. You know what? Good for you, Gal. Where's my kitty? Where's my kitty? On the jury. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we should tag Amanda and let her know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Hey, Amanda. Uh, Kitty's on the jury of Australian Survivor. We found <laughs> well, her. was on the jury. Because we're already past it. Oh, true. But we, we found her. You're welcome. <laughs> We found her. You can just go fly to Australia. Oh, she is actually going to Australia. So that works. I know. I was going to say she's literally going to Australia with Dawn. (laughs) Period. Okay. Uh Let's, let's get into this week. Final week 
of the season episode 22. Yay. Where this is also, you know, pretty straightforward. True. But I before we get into that, I do want to just yeah. say, since we had like several days in between these episodes, mm-hmm. I just could not get over the fact that this is our top five. Like, it right. is insanity. Because you think about, like, you've had two tribes that had such mirror stories. Like, like with the kind of couple alliances thinking they were running things at the very beginning, everybody else comes together to dismantle those couples. And then there's a struggle power within the big alliance now, and it splits up into two factions, and you have two leader heads on each tribe, a man and a woman. And we've got all four of those like figureheads in the top five. If you had told me like after week three that all four of Caroline, Mark, Ferris, and Kirby would be in the top five. I would have said, you are a liar. You're straight up lying. That's impossible. No way in hell. And now that we have it, I was like, I kind of want Raymond to go. Just because like this would be the most incredible top four ever. <laughs> yeah, and then we just have our like white boy comic relief in the back there. <laughs> And, and I don't mind it either. Relief. I love no. him to death. Raymond loses against basically every single person at this point. Well, yeah. I also realize but... amongst the three of us, I feel like, and I love you dearly, Jack, but I feel like you are Raymond. Oh, 100%. So like, then not David, even a question. So then David, between the two of us, who's Ferris and who's Kirby? Oh, wait, neither of us are Mark. Oh, are you Mark? Well, I was thinking you were Mark, and I was Ferris. I feel like I'm Kirby, if I'm being 100% honest. Okay, then I'm still Ferris. <laughs> That's fine. That was going to be my, you know, end game scenario. I would cry during the final. We'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> so who yeah. knows? Just because I'm bald doesn't mean that I have to be Mark, okay? Well, It does mean it, you have to be Mark. Being for other Mark reasons. means you're a diplomat, yeah. Hey, I'll take that. And you're also but, uh, willing to go to war because you're your own country. And the best I have done in an online reality game is third. So actually, you know what? I think I am, Mark. And you would love working with Valeria and Viola. Yeah. I am, Mark. Yep, that's, yeah. Uh... Yeah, that's, that feels correct. Um. So yeah, at this point... We all, we know, they know, Kirby knows, the production knows, the monkey in the tree knows. Kirby needs to win out. There's there's no scenario where really Kirby's going to make it further unless she wins out. And we go to, oh boy, an iconic immunity challenge. Well, we get, there yeah. is one thing that happens beforehand. And I mean... We, uh, an idol's just been played at final six. Obviously, there's going to be an idol in the game at final five. And Ferris kind of utilizes this in a way that we haven't seen in a good little bit of like, hey, I have the remains of my old, like my first idol. Let's just combine it with the idol that I got it merge. Oh, I, I, and then just, I miss her wrap it up this after the challenge. Thank you for bringing it up. It was, up it was it. right before. So I do not blame you. Cause it, it, I mean, it doesn't super matter, but yeah, <laughs> Raymond basically plants his own idol and then finds it in front of everyone. And this is just incredible knowledge. I will like, not perform. Finding my own idol. <laughs> Which is like, it's like, yeah. And and even later on, Ferris is just wearing their idol and being like, yeah, this is my idol. So it's just, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say this. I think Ferris, more than anybody in the history of Survivor, has really maximized the strength of an idol. Yes. Like no one else. Like it's incredible how much he was able to do with that. Like he wasn't 
able to just save himself once. He he wasn't able to just nullify votes on somebody that like honestly using it when he used it wasn't even like the the main appeal for his idol. He just maximized it, especially the threat, like not telling people about the idol, but then leaving some uncertainty that kept that kept it so that people were not willing to flush it, but also not willing to throw votes on him just in case. It's insane, like how well he maximizes his idol. It's so impressive. Yeah, I think I think when we, you know, when we have some time away from this season, I think we're really gonna look at this season. I think this season is going to be pretty defining amongst Survivor Super fans as far as like redefining what it means to have an idol and use that idol to its maximum potential. I absolutely agree with you, David. The things he was able to do with one idol, we also have to keep in mind. He's only had one idol. He did have two. He did. But the first one, he, he, one, he used it right been away. One, it's mostly been mm -hmm. one idol. Yeah. Yep. I forgot he had two at one point. Yep. Oh, yeah, that, that whole thing. Yeah, he got um, one at, like, day two and one at day 16, maybe? It's like, it was, yeah, like, right before for, Murray. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought they were a little closer together, but you could be right. I don't remember. It's a long season. <laughs> Peta who? Um, the only name of a pre juror I could remember other than Viola, <laughs> and I didn't want to. I didn't want to call out Viola like Frankie? that. She deserves more respect. Nathan. Who? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say like that's not even the first boot of the season. That's number Jess? two. Who? Uh, Jess. You don't remember Jess? No. She's the one that Frankie was coming after. <laughs> well, because she was coming after Frankie in the first episode. And then Jess got on a power trip. She's like, oh, these, the seasons, are, these, seasons, these seasons are too damn long. These seasons are too it. damn long. I love it. <sighs> but we go to immunity and it's basically some motion featuring ladder. It is just larger some motion. Just out. It's vertical, vertical some motion. But I have to say, and again, the cinematography of this damn show, because when they have the shot of the ball just going down the chutes for like a solid 30 seconds before they walk in, so satisfying to me. I loved it. I loved it. I don't know why. I just, I loved it. It mm -hmm. just tickles that little bit of a fun little itch in the back it of your brain. It really does. Um... Yeah, it's a motion. Um, most people do pretty well. And then there's Caroline. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I particularly um, appreciated Ferris's strategy of continuing to count how many seconds it was taking. Yeah. And I think that really is how I would have th thought to do it too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have to divide it out by how many balls there are. And then... I think the first two, you make sure they're they're separated. Like you don't have to do one halfway in between the other because that will come back to bite you. Like yeah. if you do it halfway in, in between each other, okay, then you got spots in between those for the other two. And then everything's equal by four. Where do you put the fifth one? Where do you put the fifth one? So that's you why I would just, along. right. You, you have to go by fifths right away right yeah. away or else it will come back to bite you and in this one it was particularly hard because you would see when somebody put it in there too soon mm -hmm. they would know it we would know it and we're like oh it's just a matter of yeah. time we have 20 more seconds before your doom but exactly. it's coming and there's nothing you can do about it yeah yeah i think i definitely think either like a third strategy or a fifth strategy is really really beneficial for a challenge like this because I, I thought about it if I were to ever do it. And it would be like having it at like, obviously the first point. And then the second one, I would have it like the fourth point. So like, let it go most of the way down. And then once it hits like the fourth main spot, you drop it. And if you're breaking everything up into five chunks, the way that I've thought about it is to do like 
one, four, two, five, three, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm verbalizing that in a way well enough to like convey what I'm trying to say, but like definitely spacing them so that way um, they're close enough together, but you also have a decent space to add the next one in. Mm-hmm. I thought Ferris. Yeah. I thought Ferris on this challenge was spectacular with it. Obviously, Mark was as well, and that ended up being the, the last two people left in the challenge. Um, and at this point, no one had won immunity in the top five except for Kirby. She went out early, and Mark barely squeaks out Ferris for his first immunity win. Yeah. Yay! Come Mark. And then th- we kind of know what's happening. The rest of this episode is very cut and dry, unfortunately. Um, it's basically because with the feigning that Raymond has an idol, it's the vote basically comes down to well, is it going to be Kirby or is it going to be Caroline? And it's. Ferris has a lot on his mind because, you know, his journey with Kirby has been very up and down, but they have been working very closely together over the last couple of votes. So he's conflicted because he has an idol. He knows that people, this is the last time you can use an idol. He knows that no one's going to vote for him because everyone knows he has an idol. <clears throat> So he could use the idol on Kirby and save her. Mm -hmm. And he sure removes all doubt by finally putting it on. And I think that's the first time most of them had actually seen it. Yeah. I did think it was eh, interesting. Yeah. It was interesting, though, because correct me if I'm wrong, but Kirby was also in on the fact that Raymond was using Ferris's idol. Right? Like the idol that he so. found, Kirby knew that that was actually Ferris's idol. So I was a little surprised she didn't pull a Hail Mary and be like, hey guys, Raymond's not actually protected. Like you you think that I'm the only option other than Caroline? Well, I'm not. <laughs> so how about we all just vote Raymond? And that's kind of what I was hoping would, would happen. Nothing against Raymond. I just would have, like, I would have loved this final four. If it had been everybody but Raymond. What do you have I, against Raymond? I just don't think he's had the power that the other four have had. I <laughs> and, agree. And it just would have been like crazy to see four Titans at the end. I agree with you, but, and there's a hard but here. However, comma. <laughs> however, however, comma, 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 my comma key is broken. Um, like my thought process is that probably Kirby does that. She loses any chance of Ferris playing the idol on her. True. And then Ferris and Raymond both vote for Kirby and Kirby now has no one. She maybe had Ferris. Mm Mm-hmm. She vote. Uh, she does that. She loses everyone and has to win two more times after the fact, or she's gone no matter what. Yeah. And Ferris could just as easily play his idol for Raymond in that situation. Exactly. exactly. So it was unlike it, but I was rooting for me to lose a draft person. <laughs> yeah. But instead, Lana loses her her last draft person, and we lose. who I'm going to say an icon of Australian Survivor in that we lose Kirby. Robbed fifth place queen! Mm -hmm. G. Otis. So I think we had what? Like nine promos of like it's going to be Ferris versus Kirby. Who falls? It's going to be Ferris versus Kirby. All for it to happen like this. Like All for it to like oh my god i'm gonna be so ge- i'm gonna be so genuinely honest with everyone right now these last three episodes were a little underwhelming for me on a whole yeah i mean because we kind it was kind of like a oh i hope the underdog 
kind of pulls it out. No, except for the last time where they do. It's just like, okay. Yeah. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still good. It's still a good season. It just... And I still like the last three episodes, but that's coming from somebody who was very invested in Ferris this season. Ferris has been my favorite, I think, since week two. And so it did seem like the odds were against him um, in it, especially uh, when we get to the next episode. Um, But yeah, I I was pretty worried for him. Like, and it's been a while since I've been that invested in a final immunity challenge as well. So I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it was fine. I just think with how much... I honestly think the promotion of this season is what has kind of, like, dampened me on it because of exactly what you were saying, Jack. Like, the whole season has been, like, Kirby versus Ferris. Is this finally the time for Kirby versus Ferris? Oh, my God. It's Kirby versus Ferris. Ferris versus Kirby. All for it to happen at Final Five when basically Kirby has no chance to save herself after Mark wins immunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that for me, like the buildup does not equal the end result. But she, maybe she couldn't have saved herself, but it still could have been Caroline. It, it very well could have been. And I think Ferris was yeah. so smart to really make it so clear, leave zero doubt in the jury's yeah. mind. I have Kirby's life in my hands. Yeah. This is my choice. And he gave a big and speech. I- And I agree with you. And I I think his speech was lovely. Mm -hmm. My problem has nothing to do with the players of this game and everything to do with the promotion of it. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at with it. But I mean, it's an iconic rivalry. (laughs) It is. It's all honestly, all three of the the main rivalries that we had this season are going to go down as like iconic rivalries on Survivor. Mm -hmm. Even Alex and Kelly. I need a rival season one of these days. Oh my God, please. Nina and Slides. (laughs) <laughs> horrible anyway you're horrible i thought that joke that. i thought that joke was gonna go over better than it did anyway <laughs> uh, episode 23 <laughs> it is final four and it's two duos mm-hmm. it's two we're duos. pretty sure how this is gonna go which is kind of determining who faces fire Quite literally, it feels like a U.S. survivor kind of like, well, okay, who's going to fire? Let's say that again. Let's emphasize this. It is two duos, Raymond and Ferris, and the other duo is Mark and Caroline. They are an unbreakable duo at this point. Who would have thought? It's so dumb. Well, she had a hand in voting out her number one ally, so she had to rely on someone, and she decided yeah. to pick. Uh, she decided to pick Mark over Kirby. And she just voted for him two episodes ago. Literally, it's like God. this season you, is. Oh, that was kidding. Never, never, that was kidding. <laughs> it it genuinely felt to the point of like Brand Steel, where it's like. Yeah, so these Honestly. two people just flat. These two people have fought every single round. Anyway, they voted together again. Just like it's it's what? literally like it's literally like Caroline and Mark had a huge falling out. Um, they declare that they're not going to work together, and then it's it's like Alliance Bond ten. It's like for what reason? <laughs> like what then, is happening here? And then off to the side, it's like yeah. Kirby and Rihanna disagree on something really small. It has a lasting impact. It's like, what? Literally. The whole Kirby and Ferris, it would be like, um, alliance strength, zero. Alliance strength, ten. Zero, ten. It's like, this season feels like a brand steal. And in the best, in the best way, way possible. In the best way possible, honestly. Um, but, yes. So we go to... Final Four Immunity. And it's this, like, it's a lot. There's a lot of balls happening. There's a lot of balls. Throw, throwing balls. You're getting you're balls. Throwing balls. You're throwing more balls. Balls. Yeah. this. That's balls. I will say, this did not 
feel like a Final Four challenge, at least when I'm comparing it to U.S. Because it's like, this this does feel like, oh, we ran out of challenges. Uh, what do we still have laying around? Oh, we have a bunch of, like, rubber balls and targets. Yeah, sure. I guess. I mean, this no felt lazy. Positive. I'm gonna be real honest. This challenge felt lazy. I was like, "What are yeah. we doing here?" It somehow felt like too much and nothing at all at the same time. It's like, okay, so we have uh, a station where you get a ball and you throw it at a target, and then you go through an obstacle course, and then you throw a ball at a target, and then you go through an obstacle course, and then you throw a ball at a target, and then you Wait, throw what balls do you mean at a target myself. And then in the middle of that is the world's uh, lowest uh, net crawl because we didn't we had some extra net that we just decided to use for this challenge, but we didn't have enough to give them like a lot of space to move in. So it's just very very low to the ground and you could barely get through it. Yeah. Now that would I would have had a panic attack under that. I would have just full pa full claustrophobia panic attack like no thank you ma'am. No thank you ma'am. No thank you ma'am. But as a lot of things have come down to on this season, it comes down to Mark and Ferris because uh, Caroline, you know, she's doing pretty good. And Raymond is there. So uh, Mark ends up winning. Good. Lovely. David's gone. Um... And, uh, yeah, so Mark wins. And so Ferris now has the decision on whether he's going to vote out Caroline or whether he's going to vote out his number one ally of the entire season, Raymond. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we all know where Ferris is voting. It's kind of a matter of, is this going to tie? Or is someone going to vote out their ally? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he's made these promises. Yeah, <laughs> He's made final two agreements with everybody. So, surely he's going to stick to them all, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, basically at this point, it's just Ferris and Raymond, uh, Ferris and Raymond deciding who Raymond's going to go against. And mm -hmm. honestly, this part, I'm not going to lie. I'm confused why Caroline. Like, why Caroline for fire making here? Just throw Marcus. Okay, he's Mark Mark's me. Oh, my God. I so, so, so darling, tired. so darling. So, darling, remember the remember the challenge that we just talked about. Where Mark? <laughs> no, here, I really here, don't. Here, I'll throw up the banner for you again. Mark won immunity. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't like... say Ferris. No, that says Mark. <laughs> and I do think that's part of the reason why they didn't want to vote oh, for yeah. Ferris is because I think they knew it's probably going to come down to fire oh. breaking. Oh, one hundred percent. And like, I, I think if Mark hadn't won immunity, it would have been Mark and Raymond. 100%. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, but I the strategy what happened in that regard, but. the strategy that Mark has at Tribal Council to kind of throw Ferris under the bus for all of his double dealing he's done uh, I get the strategy from one aspect but I don't think it was the right one for him because once the Okay, yeah, you're embarrassing him in front of the jury. Okay, that counts on you getting to the end with Ferris. Uh, but I think the bigger issue is if you are banking on Ferris to actually stand to his word and vote out Raymond, what incentive does he have now? Now that you and Caroline are clearly pressed about his actions in the game. If I'm Ferris, there's 0% chance I'm voting with you all now. Like, it's so clear that you're throwing me under the bus. You're not happy with me. Why would I get rid of Raymond now? Yeah. 
I don't think he was anyways, but still, like, right. That just squashed Ferris, any hope. Ferris needed a chance to not be the vote at yeah. final three if he did lose. And all this showed was, yeah, no, you're going to be the vote regardless of what you do. Just throw it to fire making. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens. So Yay. Uh, Raymond and Ferris vote for Caroline because, again, Jack, Mark is immune. Um, yeah. And uh, Caroline and Mark vote for Raymond because they figure that they have a better shot at fire making against Raymond than they do Ferris, which I think is correct. As we saw fire making happen between Caroline and Raymond, and this was not even close. It mm -hmm. wasn't. Is this one of the biggest blowouts we've ever had? Probably. Yeah, she I would gets say it. So. She Caroline does a fantastic job in this challenge. Mm -hmm. Raymond probably loses two people who have lost fire making by a good margin. <laughs> like it's bad. He loses to Sandra and Becky. Yeah. No, he doesn't lose to Sandra and Becky. <laughs> no, does he lose, no, he does. Does he lose to Sydney? Sure. Does he lose to Sydney? Good question. Maybe. <laughs> I think that I think that's a very fair matchup. I'm gonna be real honest. I think that's a very fair matchup. <laughs> Does he yeah. lose to um does he lose to Carson? No. no. I mean, yes, yeah, he absolutely loses to Carson. Carson oh, yeah. was oh, Carson was right Carson in there. Won. No, 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 Carson no. was in it. Carson no, Carson, Carson did a good job considering uh Heidi set a new record. <laughs> exactly. <No. laughs> facts are facts, America. Yep. And in this um, case, Australia. But yeah, this was an awkward one for me because it was like, who am I rooting for here? Because like, I, like I've said, I've made it very clear. I want to see those big gamers get to the end. So I wanted Caroline, Caroline to win for that reason. But then I'm like, well, but that's not necessarily good for Ferris now. I think Ferris really needs Raymond in the game. So I was pretty conflicted. Well... Well, Raymond, it's a blowout, yeah, literally, because Raymond doesn't get fire. Because it blow, it, Raymond's gone, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there goes my and I love that. He, I love the way he talked about his elimination being like, I was in the top one sixth of contestants on this season, and I think that's a very distinguishable fact. I'm like, oh, Raymond never changed. Never change, Raymond. Thanks, Raymond. But that's not the last iconic Raymond moment from nope. this season. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, just wait. Oh, just We're wait. We're going to talk about my favorite Raymond moment later on. We, yes, we sure are. Because now we've made it. We're here. We're talking about the finale. Um, Not much happens other than the challenges in the final tribal. So... Yeah. Final immunity? Saw trap. Yeah. This is Saw Trap. <laughs> Saw Trap. What the fuck is this? I don't know. Uh and he said we can't redo the cage of spikes and pegs. And we already did stand on just two pegs with some ropes earlier in the season. So let's make a rotating wheel of pegs that get increasingly smaller and smaller. Oh, and forgot to mention fire everywhere. Because what that makes sense. God. And family members. Oh yeah, and oh, and and, and everyone's and spouses. Family. Yeah, everyone's spouses. I didn't know Ferris was married. <laughs> I didn't. I'm gonna be real honest. I didn't you know Mark was married. 
I'm going to be so honest and genuine right here, right now on the pod. I didn't know Ferris was straight. Oh, I knew he was straight, unfortunately. I had a good feeling, but like there was always a chance. I really I wanted that. I really wanted the fantasy of this season to be the two homosexuals going against each other. I really did. Like I really wanted that for my soul and for my body. Um, but his wife is fucking gorgeous. So like mm-hmm. who cares? Um, good for you. Um and Mark's wife in her uh Shawnee dress, because she's a big fan of Shawnee. Literally. So... I was like, oh. So she came out specifically wearing that dress in honor of Shawnee, which I thought was pretty cool. Shawnee's from a, a few others. Oh, seasons. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I know about Shawnee. That's one of you the few love. names that I know. <laughs> I know some other things about Shawnee now that I don't care to talk about on this podcast because mm-hmm. I don't want to get mad. Anyway, Saw Trap. Um, Saw Trap. And... <sighs> JLP can literally pull a lever to just spin the wheel. Of course. <laughs> we went from like, oh yeah, no, these are like challenges that I could see on like Survivor Seasons to we've suddenly gone to like Big Brother levels of, yeah, we just have three wheels. Go stand on them. Which I mean, good on them for, for creating like an amazing showpiece. But like and the, the cinematography of this scene is absolutely gorgeous. And all of the shots of fire, coals on the fire, several torches, and then just three humans standing on a rotating saw trap wheel of pegs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we get like some of the most visceral pain I've ever heard from somebody in a challenge from Mark. The whole time I'm like, Mark was going through it. Are you okay? You really need to get down, guy. (laughs) Yeah, he, um, ow, that was uncomfortable to watch. But we unfortunately, well, unfortunately, fortunately, depending on how you view it, um, Mark drops after about two hours. Just because of the excruciating pain that he's in. And then it goes from stand on two legs to, oh, it's night. Stand on one leg now. It's like they keep rotating and rotating and rotating. Nope, you only have one peg now. Yeah, so. it, it was definitely intense. Um, but like it it really does come to willpower. Um and you can tell like who's the hungriest for it. Um and and I don't say that about a lot of en- endurance challenges because there are some where it really like it it's not just completely will, it's physical strength too. Like holding up your arm, you can't will yourself to do that for hours and hours if you don't have the physical strength. But this, you're you can't standing. Stand with your hand on a rock for you know all that time. True. I mean, that comes down to balance. But really, like those weren't big factors in this challenge. It just came down to enduring pain. And I kind of like that as the way to like distinguish the final immunity challenge, because like the endurance challenges are good, but I feel like the to to get to the final to win the last one. It should be based on willpower, in my opinion, or some motion. Either of those are acceptable options in my mind. Um, unfortunately, they already did some motion in this season, so we have what to about go stacking with dishes. I hate that challenge. <laughs> Come I, on, Survivor China. We, we already yes, have, and I'm happy about. Now. I'm very thrilled about that outcome. But they had yeah. already also done that challenge this season, David. So we had to go to willpower as the last resort. Because remember, they kept getting lazier, so they were just like, oh no, we're just going to make saw traps. The slow transformation from Survivor Challenge to Saw Trap. (laughs) Um, And then I also, I think this challenge saw the most like excruciating pain I've seen people in, but it also felt like the most lighthearted final tribal I've seen in a while, or final uh, immunity challenge in a while. Cause they're all just like joking and laughing and Caroline's like, I hated him. I loved him. I hated him again. And Mark is just like, ha, 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 yeah, I'm in pain. 
get me out of this. Huh. Yeah. And so after Mark drops, Caroline and Ferris are kind of just going at it for a while. And uh, two and a half hours in. Yeah. Caroline drops. And Ferris finally wins an immunity challenge. Yay. Yay. I mean, this was straight up do or die for him. Good on him. He was giving um it was giving a little bit of Romeo winning the final <laughs> immunity challenge. Mm -hmm. It's like he'd been trying for so long and he finally did it. Um and we go straight to tribal. There's no time. It's already dark. Uh the jurors have been waiting. Um and so we walk into tribal and the jury walks in. And before JLP can announce him, he makes himself very known. <laughs> and Raymond just starts maniacally laughing. <laughs> I loved it. Me I too. It was so it. pure. Oh my gosh. Like I literally. Like, ah! That would be I, me. That would I be literally me. teared up because you could just see like he really loves his friend and he's so happy for his friend. And he probably is like, my friend just won. My friend just won this show. Uh, so I like it was it was making me like emotional. I get to vote for ways. my friend. <laughs> period. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really know how this vote was gonna end up. I couldn't I, I couldn't get a gauge based on what Ferris had been saying over the last couple of episodes. Like I really couldn't gauge you know, who he was going to vote for. I do honestly think it didn't really matter. Because I think if you put Ferris against Mark, I don't think the result that happened happened. I do still think Ferris wins. Correct. He's yeah. definitely getting Valeria's vote. Yeah. He, Mark. I mean, I think realistically, Ferris takes Mark probably six three, six, three. seven to two I, at, I was at thinking, the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I was leaning towards six three because I think Mark would have had Valeria, Caroline, and Kitty. Those are the three that I think. Or at the very least, Valeria Caroline. Kitty's mm. kind of up in the air, honestly. Yeah, because I thought for sure Kitty would be a Caroline vote. <laughs> Me too, bestie. <laughs> Me too. We'll talk about it. We will. I do. Um, for me, I think it came down to um, Mark and Caroline. If they're getting votes, it's for two very different reasons. Mm -hmm. If people are voting for Caroline, they're respecting the power she did have, the move she did make. And Mark really didn't have many moves that worked for him. So if they're voting for Mark, they're voting for Mark because they like Mark. Yeah. Yeah. And because he he kind of had to play as a bit of an underdog for the bulk of the season. Mm -hmm. And hey, there's nothing wrong with voting for an underdog at the end. Right. Because it is, it, it is, you know, a series of moves in itself to have to basically fight for every single thing that you've had in the game. Yeah. Um, but no one got the opportunity to vote for Mark because Ferris votes for Mark. Mm -hmm. Mark I also want to say, I, I like that Caroline was like, if you want a challenge, take me. Um, you want to go against yeah. the best, take me. Because I think that also like played into his ego because oh, yeah. Ferris didn't look scared. Yeah. And I think that I think the threat choice, quote unquote, in this scenario would have been to take Caroline mm -hmm. for sure. So yeah, we Bye, lose Mark. our diplomat. Oh no! I love I how swear the to God, I go ahead, Jack. Sorry. The only times that I can remember him mentioning diplomat is the first three episodes and the last three episodes. I don't oh, think he was, was... relevant outside of those episodes. Like oh, not no. as he much. Said it, 
He said it so much. My point was literally going to be, um, I'm so happy to never hear the words diplomat or midwife ever again in my <laughs> entire life. Like, so thrilled. <laughs> never want to hear those words again. Because every damn confessional that Caroline had was like, as a, mis- as a midwife. And I'm like, I don't care. Respectfully. I don't. I know they're making you say this because it's TV. And I get it. And I understand. But like, I don't care. I don't care. You do need to remind the audience of your one major character trait. And that she's a midwife. Right. Yeah. And that he's a diplomat. <laughs> and that Ferris is from Western Sydney. Those are the three things I'm taking away from this season. So. Well, um, with with Mark leaving, it's official. There was Jack's last pick left in the draft. So I win the draft either way. But to be honest, like if I had had first pick, I absolutely was going to take Mark in the draft. Uh, so uh, Ferris was actually my third pick overall i wanted mark I then valeria and ferris got. what the hell were we thinking drafting ferris third in that case i mean it it kind of makes sense if you think about like mark had such a strong group of first three episodes so it makes sense that you yeah. picked him then and then uh, lana picked Vi- viola she's rooting for everyone black it fits it fits her strategy in drafting and like nobody would have guessed she would leave that early uh yeah. but then i had the next two back to back picks and i picked valeria and ferris two people i thought had very strong edits and even up to the point where valeria left i still thought she had a chance to win this season yeah i think had she not been taken out in an unfortunate uh napping accident by raymond um i <laughs> honestly think i think she there's a universe where she wins out i can see it as well because i think a lot of those end game challenges would have been very very suited for valeria i think valeria has a great shot at final tribal especially if rihanna is not in the in the situation because valeria had been doing consistently well in um the endurance challenges too and i think she's got enough athleticism to do well in like the balancing challenges i think she could have done pretty well in that final four disaster ball challenge so you know i need uh duos i need a duo season and i need valeria and viola please thank you Mm -hmm. duos versus rivals well no just duos in general it doesn't have to be all rivals I know that's what I'm saying. Like, have like a team of like people that work together and a team of people who hate each other. <laughs> oh, <laughs> See who does better. Okay, I like that. I am out of that. Friends versus foes. <laughs> hey, that's a theme. Um, I just I would I would love to see JLP go foes win. <laughs> friends, you win. <laughs> Yay, friends. <laughs> Yay, friends. <laughs> This is the friends tribe. I could not take him seriously saying this is the friends tribe. This and they, friends they have a swap two days in because like JLP is like, I can't do this. We need to call them something else. That's It'd probably be allies and foes. Yeah. It'd probably be allies and foes. That's in Australian that's... Survivor, no matter how you switch up, you could you could be a <laughs> uh, freaking somebody who's who's so weak and you get switched over to the brawn tribe. Guess what? You're a brawn now. You're a brawn. Oh, you're not a contender? Now Way. you're a contender. Way. Way, you remember when you were a brawn? Don't, don't <laughs> she she don't was so proud. She's like, I'm a brawn. Queen, Way. Oh, I love Way. I love Way. I love Way. She's like, I'm a brawn. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but I'll support it's it. It's giving, David, it's giving, I'm a trash. <laughs> I'm a trash. I'm a trash. <laughs> Um, they have their beautiful, lovely final morning breakfast. It's whatever. Let's talk about this final tribal. Because I'm going to be really honest. On a whole, I was underwhelmed. And I was on the same boat when Valeria said, y'all need to step your pussies up. Because what you're giving is not giving. These are beautiful yeah. words. But you're not, you're not saying anything. You're not saying anything with these words that you're saying. 
And I was thinking at the exact same time Valeria brought it up midway through uh, Final Tribal, I was like, girl, same, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. Do it, something. I think most of the jury had already kind of decided what they wanted to do, and most people weren't going to change. Mm -hmm. I do want to point out that Valeria's question is a classic question I want to see more because holy shit, it is probably the most revealing question of someone's humility and game sense that I've honestly that like it's genuinely the question that I go to. It's just whose vote do you think you have? Say it right now. And both of them going, I don't know, maybe the majority that I was definitely let down by because I was like, you're you're just gonna not answer the question. No, I disagree here because I think that is a gotcha question. That is a lose lose because you don't know what kind of answer that person wants you don't know if they want you to be confident and say you think you've got most of the votes or if they want you to show some humility so like it's really like how do, how do i read their mind like you could give an honest answer but what if that shoots you in the foot so i like that they both like held back and they're like no, we're not going to give you an answer you want. And that kept him on an even playing field. Because I was worried I, when Ferris answered first that Caroline would give a more, more direct answer and get rewarded for that. Well, um, unfortunately, David, Caroline didn't give a direct answer to anything in this final tribal council. <laughs> so I don't think that would have been much of a worry. For me, though, if I'm answering that question, I go, well, I know I have a few friends and allies on the jury. So I would hope that I would have their votes and what I'm saying would solidify that in my mind. I hope that everybody else on this jury is open-minded and has been listening to the way that I've been uh, discussing how I approached this game, how I worked through this game, and how I got to this point. Still That's a non-answer. It's still a non-answer, though. But, but it's saying, I have faith in the people that I know I've worked with in this game. That's better than what they both said. That's a little bit better, at least, because at least you're giving a little bit more. Because I, I I, agree with you, because I didn't like the way either of these two answered, but I also wouldn't give a direct answer personally. Yeah. That's just me and, like, the person that I am. But giving something a little bit more concrete, like, I know I have people, like, my allies are sitting on jury. So I would hope that my allies would back me and back the game that we played and the game that I played, mm -hmm. even if I were the one to take them out. Yeah. And it even like beyond just how do I appease Valeria? You have to think of the ramifications of everybody else on the jury listening. Like if you make it so clear that you think you got their votes locked up, people might be insulted by that and switch their vote. So like I said, it's, it's a very tough question to answer. Um, but the question that got me the most in this was actually Eileen. I didn't expect her to go so hard at Ferris. I was like, wait, are you even going to vote for your friend and close ally? She she was basically, and this is a good friend, because I think she was setting him up to answer well, but she sure delivered it in a tough way. Like, what moves did you make that were, were good? Because I kept trying to help you out, and you refused my help. Um, and I don't know that he answered the question as well as he could have, um, but I bet you almost everybody who had doubts about Ferris's game or even Caroline's game I bet watching the season back they're like oh yeah these two were great players and we we can have no shame in having either of them represent our season definitely 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 yeah I I think overall the jury came into this probably with a pretty good idea of what they were doing I thought the questioning was good I just I, I and I I don't want to keep you know harping on this I just felt very underwhelmed from both of their final tribal performances and i think really the only thing that saved ferris's was his final speech talking specifically about you know the um oh god what it was the idol the whole idol situation mm -hmm. everything with yeah. his idol i was like bitch if you don't yeah. talk about this goddamn idol ferris like yeah you need to explain this and it's clear that he doesn't have that much survivor knowledge. he's not a fan right he's not a super fan he's a fan he he's well, enough of a fan to be fan. like 
he he's watched oh. Australian Survivor. I would have a bit more doubt that he's watched much mm-hmm. American. Sure. Yeah. So I'm just like, bitch, you need to explain what happened. And then I love Kirby asking the question, Ferris talking about the whole idol situation, and then Kirby going to Raymond, and Raymond's like, yeah, no, it was his idea. Mm-hmm. I was like, better, Raymond. <laughs> I was a little you better, surprised. You better get your one one thousandth right. of money. <laughs> I was a little surprised that it didn't come out about um, Ferris's involvement with uh with the advantage that Raymond had because he was so integral to that move working. So I was surprised that that didn't come up. Maybe it did. Maybe they didn't show it, but also I thought, well, maybe, maybe Ferris doesn't want to risk letting people know that and getting any sort of backlash from that because it could go either way. You like, it did seem like most people were pretty cool with how it went down, but I think that's largely due to the fact that it was Raymond. And I think they're giving him more grace than they would a lot of other people. So maybe it was smart to not own that as a move in this instance. I will also say, uh, obviously, time in terms of like how long speeches are, uh, it's probably pretty important. Ferris's speech was 10 minutes and they cut most of it. Uh, so a, at least he said such as such on Twitter that his speech, yeah, I was gonna, was I was gonna say he talked about a that. Like, lot oh. longer. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so it's not, at least to me, he probably like mentioned it and it just never really came up or like, they were like, okay, so just to clarify on like this, I also want to talk about the Pretty much for me, the moment that Caroline lost pretty much everything. Caroline is asked about her big move of the game. And she talks about final six when she misplayed an idol and had her number one go home. As her big move. And Raymond rightfully calls it out as your best move in this game was misplaying your idol. And at that point, I'm like, okay, yep, okay, great. Ferris just has this. And there's nothing, There, there's not much Caroline can do. She might pick up a couple votes here or there, but it's not, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, her big her big move that she should have talked about more, and she did mention it was when she did get Viola out, and she kept Mark on a leash, on a safe leash, a choke collar leash. Anytime he made a wrong move, yank. That's what she should have. <laughs> that's what she should have talked about. Yeah, but I mean, we literally have an idol that was misplayed versus that that saved mark when he didn't need to be saved versus ferris using an idol that didn't even exist to save raymond Mm -hmm. just the dichotomy of literally final six versus final five it's kind of a blowout and that's why it was a blowout a unanimous vote and the winner is I really thought Ferris as a winner of this season was too obvious based on all of the editing. And I'm so happy I was wrong. I am so thrilled that I was wrong. So thrilled I was wrong. Mm -hmm. I've, I've thought based on the edit that since Valeria left, I did think he was the most likely, but I didn't think it was by a large margin. And I think that's one of the things I really liked about this season is that most of the people who made it deep into the game had very strong stories from early on. And they were all people that we saw their thinking, their strategy throughout. And that's so important with this show in particular, because they're not going to just let somebody win and we don't get their story from early on. Um, even people like Pia, like she, she had a pretty quiet edit 
uh, especially the first half of her season, but we got it in the very first episode about how she's an actress and how she's going to play a quiet game. So like early on, I knew Pia was winning. I think this was one of the more unpredictable seasons. Um, but I really appreciated that because it kept me on my toes throughout. And I think that's why I consider this honestly a top five season of survivor that I've watched period. I would definitely put it top 10. I'd really have to think about it, honestly. Uh, there's a universe that could be top five. And I think I think I would just need to take the recency bias out. Mm -hmm. But it's it was a phenomenal season with a phenomenal winner. The first, first Middle Eastern. Arab, yeah. Yeah, the first Arab winner of Australian Survivor. And we haven't had one in the U.S. So I was I, about to yeah. say Survivor, period. Yeah, I I think it might be. Survivor. I don't know about like South on Africa. It, on, at least, uh, on at least so, English speaking survivors. So, uh, I believe I'd seen it. Uh, first Middle Eastern and Arab winner of Survivor period. Second Muslim to win after Gabler. Gabler's Muslim. Did not know that. Yes. Okay. And believe me, I was pretty surprised as well. I'm going to double check my source on that, but mm -hmm. I'd always remembered that he was Muslim and it was just never brought up. Mm -hmm. Then first Arab winner. I'm going <laughs> to go with that. I would like to not acknowledge that man. <laughs> so Yeah. And man, we have such a great diverse group of winners for Australian Survivor. It's very even with the genders too. Um, unlike American Survivor, uh, but yeah, I, I'm just so excited. Like I, I would love if one day we get a winners at war for <laughs> Australian Survivor. It'll take a while. National winners at war. Ooh, that'd be fun. Where's Vesepia? Mm hmm. Thank you very much. Um, but with that being said, we're done. We're done here. It's over. God damn it. I I mean, obviously, we've said it before. This was a very interesting season. Just because this is easily the most fluid season of Survivor I've ever seen. I where mm -hmm. quite literally, people would turn on each other and then work together and then turn on each other and then work together. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm describing Kirby and Ferris. Oh, um, I was thinking and Caroline, Caroline and Mark. And, Mark. <laughs> and Caroline and Mark. Like genuinely, I think someone mentioned it during the season of like, we're just going to take out e each other's pawns. And at the end of the game, we're genuinely left with like the King's, and the queens of the season, plus one rook in the back named Raymond. But I'm not complaining about that either. Like, this was an incredible season. And now I'm going to have to eventually find time to go back through uh, the remainder of Survivor Australia. And I don't know how I'm going to do that. That's a good, like two survivor seasons length for every single season which is a lot already that's like but... thousands of hours of television mm -hmm. you can do it yeah. i believe in you i'll and figure we, it out and we might do it i don't know we haven't made any concrete plans but i would like to you know refilled on season one mm, uh season one 2005 no, or like God, no. 2017 because like those <laughs> are two different branches seven is it really 20 2016 i want to say yeah i was gonna say it had to or 2015 mm, was it no nah, 2016 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so 16 oh. yep you just subtract eight from this year because this counts as a season this year, so you can't subtract one. Uh, you have to, yes. or you don't. You can't subtract nine because then you're taking away a year from this season. If that makes sense. Yes, 
And on that note, we're going to get out of here because <laughs> we've been talking about this season for so long. But David won the draft. <laughs> David won the draft. I'll take the wins when I can because I don't get a lot. <laughs> Good job, David. Thank you. You know, It's easier in the drafts where we just pick people and there's not points. So True. Yeah, it's like must win draft. I wonder if there were points involved oh, with this. Whether if there were points in, involved, I would have like killed it. Like, well, at least based on like because I had three of the final four. Um, True. I pretty yeah. I consistently had either the same number or more than Lana and Jack the whole season. So, True. yeah. Well, it was pretty close the whole time though. So yes. <laughs> well, with that being said, if you are missing out on more uh, Survivor content, don't worry, because we are covering Survivor 46 here at the Cup TV, so make sure to check that out. We've got a lot of other reality TV content here as well, so if you want to check that out, make sure to subscribe, like, and share on your way out. Hit the bell so you know exactly when we drop all of our fabulous, lovely, wonderful episodes. Um, check out the description below for all of the links to our other channels, the links to our membership pages. You can go follow us on social media as well at the Cup Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can go follow the three of us if you really wanted to. And you could also go get your merch if you are currently living in North America. We're working on other international options. Um, thank you so much for joining. And with that being said, cheers. 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 Ooh. Ooh. You know, Ooh. I, I really thought for a moment, just because U.S. Survivor is a million dollars, I thought Raymond was proposing a hundred dollar lunch, in which case <laughs> I was going to be so confused. How much? No, honey, no, 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 no. 